Welcome to Rally Report 85. It looks tonight as if this could turn out to be one of the most surprising Lombard RAC rallies for a very long time. All hell has broken out in this event since we were with you last, and the leaderboard here in the control room in Nottingham has scarcely been the same for two stages in succession. The big news tonight is that Marco Allen and the Lancia has had on to his lead from the start, but right behind him and going like a train is Tony Pond in the Metro. Now, we left you last night with the cars plunging into the Forest of Dean. Since then, they've driven through the night and through the Welsh forests. They've now turned east and they're back here in Nottingham. Just 20 stages, but many of them icy and very rough indeed, and they've taken a very heavy toll. 54 cars no longer in the game, and four of the top seeds are out. Hanu Mikulu is out, and Water Royal in their Audis. Indeed, it's said that Water Royal's car could be had for a very low price indeed. And Timo Salon and Grundle are out in the Persia's hotly tipped, of course, to win this event. And sadly, Markham Wilson is out in the uh, Metro with a broken prop shaft. So this rally really is now absolutely wide open. But let's pick up the action as dawn breaks over the Welsh forests at Truscoid. Headlights blazing, Marco Allen in the Lancia led for most of the night until stage 15 at Riola when he dropped to second place. The new leader of the Lombard RAC rally, Hanu Mikola. The Troscoid, but he's not happy with his engine at all. World champion Timo Salonen in the Peugeot made progress up to second place, but a puncture and a spin drop him back to fifth. Ewa Kankana in the Toyota Celica struggles to stay in the first ten, but his teammate Valdegard rolled out of the rally on the Lady Megan stage. The second Lancia spun at the same point, but Henry Toivonen survives despite a loss of engine power. Tony Pond has progressed from tenth to sixth, despite lighting problems and severe understeer. He was fastest on the Maelskut stage in the 6R4. Jimmy McRae in the Opel Manta 400 has survived the ditches and earlier brake problems to be 10th overall at Troscoid. In a real tussle with Jimmy McRae was Russell Brooks in his Manta until he spun out at Riola and lost 15 and a half minutes. RX-7 of New Zealander Rod Millen was up to 13th place before two punctures. Oh, what a night for Malcolm Wilson in the NT Metro 6R4. Light problems, a flying bonnet, two differential changes, and he's still lying eighth overall. Michael Sundstrom in the Peugeot 205 has consistently performed well. A few brake problems, but still, he's seventh. Carla Grundell, fastest in at least three stages, the Swedish driver ripped his spotlights off in a spin. He's lying third. Fast downhill into a slow right-hander at Dovey. Number 10, MG Metro 6R4 and Tony Pond have received tremendous support from the many tens of thousands of spectators and rally enthusiasts. <laughs> Sixth when we last saw Tony and Rob Arthur. But now he's up to third overall on the 1985 Lombard RAC rally. Number three, Marco Allen, fourth fastest at Lanaven and second at Meherin. He's now roaring along, fastest on both the Havron and Dovey stages. Kankanen in the rear-wheel drive Toyota Celica benefits from the failure of others, but he's running strongly in eighth overall, the leading non-four-wheel drive car. <laughs> Hanu Mikola was leading the rally at Troskoid, but that lead is shrinking from 51 to 43 to 21 seconds at Havren. Disaster strikes here at Dovey. Certainly the engine is sick. His first retirement in the Lombard RAC since 1979. What a canny drive from Per Eklund in the sole surviving Audi Quattro. 12th at stage two, now seventh overall. Number 15, Michael Sundstrom in the British entered Persia. Fourth overall, despite less power than the works cars. 
four breaks evicted Jimmy McRae earlier, but the AC Delco Opal Manta has kept out of serious trouble, and the Scottish Circuit of Ireland winner is currently ninth. Since Truscoid, Henry Teuvenen has dropped to fifth with fuel problems. Then he roared back to second, and throughout the rally, he has stayed in the top six. The rotary engine Mazda, driven by Ingvar Carlsen, who was feeling unwell at the early stages of the rally, is now up to ninth. And incidentally, the other Mazda of Rod Millen is just behind in 11th place. Russell Brooks is on one of his famous charges. From 20th, he's up to 16th and climbing. Timo Salonen, the 1985 world champion, will not win the Lombard RAC rally. He coasts to a standstill with oil pressure problems. By some standards, Terry Gamey has had few problems. A puncture has not stopped him from moving up to 10th overall. Malcolm Wilson is up to sixth, despite very sore hands from the failure of the power steering. Quite a problem with 410 brake horsepower to control. Leading the Coupe des Dames is Cumbrian lady Louise Aitken-Walker with co-driver Ellen Morgan. Forty-two, Phil Collins. He may not be far from hometown Pontrilus, but that's no consolation for this puncture. But he continues on the rim. Rear axle problems have not kept him out of 13th place. Well, said as I said, Mark and Wilson went out at the next stage with a broken prop shaft the second time in two years for mechanical failure. Now, we raised last night the question of safety in this event, both for the crews and spectators, now that these cars pack so much power and travel so fast. As Hanno Mikula put it the other day, the straights get shorter and shorter every year. Now, we had a very graphic description of that problem in the next stage, stage 24. <laughs> Stay stopped and be cancelled, okay? There's no more cars until everybody's back. Simple as that. Well, they believe there were 20,000 spectators in the forest at that stage, and uh, after nine cars had gone through, the stage marshal actually stopped the stage and credited all the remaining runners with the slowest time, which is what the rules provide. It does seem extraordinary that these spectators, who really love this sport very dearly, indeed love it so much, they traipse out to these remote forest stages in all weathers at all times of the day and night, and yet seem to have so little comprehension of the real danger as these cars hurtle down these narrow forest tracks and seem to have no sense to listen to what the marshal uh, says. Now, let's pick up the action again as the cars turn east for the last of these 30 hours of driving towards After Nottingham. 25 stages of the Lombard RAC rally, Marco Allen is still leading and leading by three minutes in the Lancia Delta S4. When we last saw Ewa Kunkinen in the Toyota Celica, he was lying seventh. Now he's up to sixth despite a slipping clutch and a broken rear differential. Per Eklund, number eight in the privately entered Quattro. And he is now up into fifth place after 25 stages. Henry Teuvenen is not a happy man. In the second of the Lancias, he's been low on petrol and had to coast through to the finish and now is suffering from fuel starvation. Tony Pond, on the other hand, is in tremendous form and everyone is getting very excited about the progress of the 6R4. Jimmy McRae is making excellent progress in his Opel Manta, up to seventh overall now. Russell Brooks. 20th, 16th, and now here he is up to 12th place overall, continuing that charge.
Jimmy, you're lying seventh, but I gather you've had a few late problems this afternoon. Yeah, it's the fourth last stage. We had uh, an oil seal go in the sump, which was spraying oil onto the clutch. So we had a slip and clutch for the last, uh, for two of these stages. Then they changed it before Donington tonight. So, but the car's back to square one again. Everything's okay for tomorrow. Did that cost you much time, though, those problems? It probably cost us maybe about a minute or a minute and a half, something like that. We just took it easy over to the long stages just to make sure that the thing would get to them. How tough are you finding it with the two-wheel drive keeping up the pace against the four-wheel drive cars? No, we're just not keeping up the pace, that's the problem. No, there's just, the, the conditions have been so bad, so muddy and wet and slippy uh, that we're just, no way we can keep up with the four-wheel drive. So really all I'm out for is to be the best of the rest. And we hope so too, but there are a few spectator problems as well today, I hear. Yes, I mean, there are thousands of spectators around, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's some of them standing off all stupid places. Marco, you seem to be having a textbook rally so far, leading solidly. Have you had any problems today? No, today is no, no problem. Only have a, yesterday evening a little bit misfiring, but you know, that's a... Nobody knows, still finding that problem, but okay, like in general, it's no problem. We heard there was a little bit of trouble with the gearbox. Yes, I changed now in gearbox in Donington, before last stage. So you've serviced just before coming here? Yeah, 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 everything, everything going well. We heard that one of the stages was cancelled because of spec spectator problems. How bad has that been? Well, one stage I have in, in maybe four stages before, in, like I'm in Donington, in helicopter follow for me. And that's a danger, as you know, in nobody uh, understand I coming and helicopter making too much noise and nobody seen I coming. Tony, you've been carving your way up through the field dramatically today. What sort of a day have you had? We've had a, a trouble-free day, which is the main thing. That's what this rally is all about, really. Just go along without trouble. No problems at all with the car. We heard there were one or two things that you were checking on. Well, we've done routine maintenance. We've, the car hasn't let us down or cost us a second, really. I mean, it's been very, very good. You look pretty shivery. How are you feeling health-wise? <laughs> well, I've still got the flu, so um, it's, it's still with me. It makes me shiver. It seems to have turned into a rally of accidents. How tough has the going been out on those stages? Well, I mean, that's typical of this event, really. I mean, it happens every year. I'm normally the one who gets blamed for it, but, I mean, it happens <laughs> to everybody. I hear you'd had a few handling problems at some point. Have you cured those? Yeah, we've um, gradually been working around the car, and um, we're getting it better. We, we did go through a sort of a, a dodgy spell, but um, nothing serious, really. Other people had a lot more trouble. So after two days of real drama, this is how the leaderboard looks. The Lancia and the Metro in the lead, closely followed by Henry Teubelin, the second Lancia, breathing down Tony Pond's neck. Michael Sundstrom, the young Finn, in the only remaining uh, Peugeot, Talbot Peugeot, the fact the Coventry-built car, Per Eklund, in the privately entered Audi. Five drivers in four mix of cars, separated by about 13 minutes. Now the cars behind the staggering are all two-wheel drive cars. There's one Toyota there, one Opel, two uh, Mazdas and a Nissan. So who got it sadly wrong yesterday when he said that the two-wheel drive cars this year would really have a very thin time? I'm afraid I did, and obviously not for the first time. Although they're separated by a fair gap, up in fact to about half an hour, these first three cars are, of course, all unproven, so anybody could win the rally, I think, over the next uh, three days. Now, let's uh, leave youth programme tonight with a word of praise for the little mentioned uh, co-drivers because they've had a pretty rough day today. Uh, Walter Rolls, co-driver, in fact, had his door torn off when the crash occurred. Another co-driver was heard in one of the rest halts speaking about his driver and he said that he keeps leaving the road and always somehow on my side. So spare a thought for them in your prayers. That's really all for tonight. See you again tomorrow, no doubt, bog-eyed at 11.50. Good night.